Here we come, walk down the street. We get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys, and people say we monkey around. But we're too busy singing to put anybody. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Bump Monkey Mafia. I'm Frankie V, here with my broadcasting partner. See, you're rather good guy. And we got some very special guests with us today. We have the owners of XWE, Cody Buckner and Nathan McGlennon. What's up, boys? Hey, how's it going? Hey, thanks for having us. We, we really do appreciate it. Oh, so man, we, we love Salina. Yeah, we love Salina. Salina's a good town. It's a fun town. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it, but there's, there's a lot going on in Salina. There's a lot to do. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's some... Some activities that you could partake in up here. One in particular, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like to go to Bible study up here. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the pastors are great up here. Right? <laughs> they yes. really just bring me to They're so place. divine. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, how long have you all been buddies? Uh, about three years now. Three years, yeah. No. Now, you, you've been around XTV for a while. I've seen some YouTube videos of you in a backyard with a trampoline. And some recliners. I saw some recliners. And some recliners, yeah. What's what's funny is y'all had a y'all's entrance was still better than most people would have great arenas. Well, thank you. So. Yes. <laughs> oh man, you guys are digging back in the archives here. Yeah. Um, no, we uh, it started off uh, just four friends and um, all ser- shared a, a general interest in wrestling. Loved wrestling. Loved to watch it. Um, and yeah, I mean, we we jumped on a trampoline and you know went out and wanted to model ourselves after our favorite wrestlers and eventually uh you know as we got older got a little bit more serious with it and wanted to entertain some of our closest friends and neighbors uh and then you know i.e fast forward um you're looking at the product you are today and um there's been obviously a lot um that has happened um to what meets the eye now yeah um and i I don't know how long we have here uh but uh, i mean we could we could probably spend a whole entire segment as long Um, as this digital quarter works we got all night (laughs) we might need more beer yeah take three (laughs) <laughs> um so yeah here we are today and we're looking forward to I, I don't know what number this is for us i think this is our 15th show 15 yeah, and it's it's not 15th. easy man it's a it's a journey so uh in april we'll celebrate our third year anniversary and to just kind of put that into perspective a lot can happen in a year's time i mean look at your everyday oh, life and, yeah. and what transpires and to get here and to be where we are, I'm I'm so proud of the product and and the relationship you know um, that I have with the the workers and the the organization and the team and it, it's it's fun to lead these guys. They they do great work for us and um, man, it's 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 so much fun. I mean, you don't feel like it's a work. You don't. We have fun putting these these events together and and going out and performing for an audience. I mean, visually, it's it's by far the best product we've seen on the independent level. Well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's amazing. You, uh, I mean, we've been to, we've covered tons of shows, and y'all show that we did, first show we did for y'all, Haunted Havoc, production's the best production we've ever seen. Well, thank you. And Na- down, Nathan's man. being pretty mosti- modest. It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. And we've been pretty fortunate. We have a really good crew that helps us out. Um, a lot of people that have backed us over the last, you know, almost two years to help keep this ball rolling. And we try not to do each show with new ideas, new presentations, you know, give something to fans to really talk about when they go home. Well, and, and it's, you know, I, I want to give a shout out to those people that you, you don't see in front of the camera because we do. We have a, probably a crew of 15 to 20 people mm-hmm. behind the scenes that work all day long um, to put that production yeah. on that you're talking about. And we really do think that differentiates ourselves amongst our competitors. I mean, we I've always said and I'm on record, if you're going to do something, let's do it right. And yep. um, part of wrestling to me is you know that that entrance um the production and and you come to see what this yes exactly character yeah 
So. And, and you're right, man. A lot can happen in a short amount of time. Like we started in what August? July. Yeah. July. First show we ever did was yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. And we were in. So his you start off with like yeah. the WrestleMania of yeah. Oklahoma. <laughs> I mean, it's that's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was uh, in your spare bedroom with an iPad. Yeah, with an iPad recording off a recorder, and and now we got equipment. And five months works. later, here we are with the <laughs> best two guys that own the best promotion, maybe in the Southwest region, arguably. You know. Well, thank you. That's uh, uh, very kind to say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, by far. I mean, you know, Oklahoma is great. You know, mm-hmm. they've got a lot of good stuff. Texas is on fire. Kansas. The talent up here is unreal. But, I mean, to see, come to y'all's show. Y'all tell a story from the time a guy gets the entrance ramp to the time the count of three is over with. Yeah. You learn a lot about that person. Yeah. And that's something you don't see. Yeah, we put a we, we devote a lot of time and energy, uh, our creative team especially. Um, there's a lot of hours, man hours, put into discussion on someone's character, someone's overall personality and and you know, how we're going to get their character across to the audience, how we're going to relate that to the audience, Um, you know, from building the character to, you know, the trainers, you know, Billy Simmons um, coming up with with move sets and making them feel comfortable. I mean, we do. We uh, we probably have one to two meetings a week um, and they're they can they can go pretty long. Yeah, Um, we we, um, the way I see it is I like to put myself in the fans perspective. Will the people who have paid to come to this show, A, will they like the show, B, yeah. will it make sense, and C, will it be something they can remember and tell their friends or family or whoever yeah. about, like, you have to got, you guys have to go check this out. Yeah. Those are the things I think about when we talk about bookings and, and you know, move sets and, you know, show ideas and things like that is, you, you know. You know, it, it speaks a lot. Like, you know, last show was our first show to see XWE. Yeah. And, you know, we're fans, and got a little bit in, in the business and when we walked away it's like man i'm a bubba sutton fan like finish yeah. was cool like you fall in love with the, the yeah, characters like, it's yeah amazing yeah i mean it's like you know we talked a little bit about when i was talking to bubba and finish earlier we you know the end of the last show mm. you think the show's over then all of a sudden rwe pops up on the screen and you're like what the hell and at that moment like, you, you forget that you're calling wrestling in front of 400 500 people you're a fan and you see, you know, Merrick McWi- Mary McMichaels and Chris Fell walk out. And you're like, what the hell's going on? And then you see the end of that show and you're just like, yeah, I think I just put my pants. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. You, it, you tap into that emotion. Yes. And, um, you know, I'm not going to lie. In, in that moment, too, I think a lot of us were kind of awestruck uh, as to what was taking place and going on. I mean, you, you can take notes and you can talk about it in these meetings and, and you write all this stuff down. Um, but until it plays out and yeah. how you witness it unfolding before your very eyes, you can be. I mean, you can be awestruck. It, it's I, I wasn't fully prepared, honestly, um, for the reaction yeah. that uh, It kind of went the way I was hoping it would go. <laughs> Dude, it was so unreal. It was unreal. Just, yeah. It just felt like 1996 the all yeah. over again. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You don't feel that much emotion so much anymore now that you've kind of grown up. and You don't feel that wrestling emotion. But that night, you felt it because, like, even though we didn't know. I mean, we, we've heard of Memory Michaels and Chris Vell. We've, we knew a little bit about leading up to the first show. We didn't know the hell that was going to happen. <laughs> and that's why you. Not a lot like, of people did. Yeah. and that's. I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> and that And that's why I think that element of surprise was such a shock because anymore, I mean, it's, it's pretty black and white. I mean, there, there really are no secrets. I mean, you always, as, as a kid, I tuned into WCW yeah. to watch what would unfold, what would happen next. There was always that surprise ending. And I feel like wrestling's kind of shied away from that. Um, it's and it's so unfortunate. Stale, yeah. Like we were saying earlier, I can't sit through a raw. Yeah, I fast forward eighty percent of Raw. I record it now. I never watch it yeah. live anymore. So it's hard for me because I'm so in tune with our operation and what we're doing. Um, I, you know, I, I'm so focused on XWE. Yeah. But I, uh, I actually went to my first WrestleMania um, this past year, and I, I tell everybody I think I'm still on the WrestleMania hangover because <laughs> I yeah. can't watch it. I mean, once you've seen the Mecca. Yeah. You've yes. seen the show of shows. I know where it's hard to, more. yeah, it's hard to go watch a Raw yeah. or a SmackDown. Um, so hard to watch, man. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, you know, a lot of guys in the business don't watch it. I don't know I mean, what it is. You're going to force feed a three-hour show that's yeah. not good to people once a week. I think it was a huge mistake for them to go to three hours. Yeah. I think it, was a uh, terrible it took away from the pay per views because the pay per views yep. were three hours. And honestly, you don't need that much material on a Monday night, you know. No. And they, have, they basically fill it with these segments that are 20 minutes long that no, don't need to be that long. So, yeah, I wish they would go back to two hours. And honestly, I wish they'd get rid of the SmackDown brand and just go back to one. Just being I want to be opposed yeah, to that. I mean, you're force feeding wrestling yeah. up people's throats, which is not bad. Yeah. But when it's when it's crappy, it's no good. Yeah. The thing too, we've talked before about uh, like storylines. Like back in the day, like way back in the day, like a title run run would be a year, two years. Yeah. Like they don't do that anymore. No. It's like these titles flip flop like every like, week. Yeah, every yeah. other week, and it's like you don't even know who's champion anymore because it exchanges hands so many times. It's pretty frustrating yeah but man so like CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> how'd you get into the business like what what yeah. was that moment where you're like i'm gonna be a pro wrestler uh, honestly so um you know kind of getting back to um how we got started up and and um a lot of us um you know 18 graduated high school went on to college for two years i'd come home and i would see you know the the guys that i i wrestled around with in the backyard and we'd get together and we'd you know we'd still do it um just because we we enjoyed it and it was something Uh, to do and um then we decided one day once we all kind of you know and we all went our separate directions went our separate ways and um when the four of us kind of got back together and we you know two of them had moved away from salina and then moved back um, I had my degree in uh, business management, decided, hey, you know, we had something. Um, when, when we were entertaining 65 to 75 people in a backyard on a trampoline, yeah. um, I, can, I can only imagine if, if we took this seriously and we, in, we invested our time and, and you know, <laughs> legitimized this, how big this could be um so we did uh, we did our due diligence it wasn't like an overnight thing it took months of planning and coming up with a business plan and um doing your market analysis and and meeting with the right people um you know you i always say it pays to know people um you got to build that rapport and relationships and um finally um made the investment to purchase a wrestling ring and once we had our our trainer intact and um we we started training three times a week and finally um, arrived and put on our first show and uh, it was it was a hit um, and we knew we were onto something from that point on um, and I'm not gonna sit here and say it was the I mean we have we've had our ups and downs I mean it's been a roller coaster ride yeah uh, but we've we've come a long way and and to see our brand grow consistently. Um, through the years, through the months, um, it's something I'm proud of because um, I can honestly sit here and say that you know every show, every event we've put on, we've we've grown, um, and it's. I read something on Facebook yesterday, and it's funny. It was kind of weird how I found it. Well, there's a promotion down in Gun- or Gun- in Guthrie, Oklahoma, called BCW, and our buddy Terry Pinter, he's a promoter down there, and he posted something about basically you know a wrestling family. Well, one of XWE's own, I can't remember who his name was, it's across my mind, basically was saying that he had his son that wanted to go to an XWE show and that they couldn't afford to go. So he said, well, basically, let me help you tear down the ring, put it up. Mm-hmm. And uh, y'all said, heck yeah. And he's actually a manager now, I think for Xavier? Yeah. Yeah. I saw that story yesterday, and it was weird how I found it. Yeah. Because, like, it was nothing from anybody XWE. It just popped up. And it's funny because I'm like, well, heading to Kansas tomorrow. I was like, I felt like I was destined to read it before I come up here, before we do that. And that kind of touched my heart because I'm like, you know, we're, we're always a close wrestling family. Oh, yeah. Let's see you guys up here and how close knit y'all are. That's, that's awesome. We are close. And I think you guys heard us, um, uh, you know, one thing I love that we do before every show starts, we, we hold hands and we pray together. Yeah. And for anybody that's new in our locker room, we, we make them feel welcome. And, and we say it, you know welcome officially to 
our brand. You are now a part of the XWE family. And yeah, we got that last show. And I yeah, was like, yeah. And I, I want people to. I, I want to. If I, if I'm traveling, I would hope somebody is taking care of me the way I'm. I'm trying to take care of people that we're bringing in because um, it's no different than I. You know, I'm in the hotel and hospitality business. Um, when I've got incoming guests, yeah. you know, you're you're essentially inviting them into your home. Yeah, you're making it their home away from home and. Um, you guys have been great to us. We walked into oh, a popcorn yeah. well, thank you. bucket today. We already, popcorn. No, we are, that already that's gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> with a super cool note, and I mean, y'all have been awesome to us ever since the get go. Yeah, and you're right. You it's know? about building relationships, and unfortunately, the world today nobody wants and that's to sad. get to know anybody. Yeah, yeah. that's sad. It is sad. It's almost like people have forgotten with technology the way it is. Yeah. People have forgotten how to even carry on a conversation. Yeah. Um, but yes, we are one very close family, and um, it goes beyond the ring. I mean, we're we're calling each other, and it's a brotherhood. Uh, you know, we'll we'll continue to support each other in our everyday lives and check in with one another. And it's it's, I mean, there's so much time in between each show, um, and I, I think you make the most out of that. Um, beyond the mat yeah. so to speak so i'll tell you when i was in the business and i took a break and it was like what 12 years what about 12 years yeah. and then when we came back and started doing this thing uh it was just overwhelming the way that the guys that i used to know were like yeah. hey man where you been like just like welcomed you back yeah mm-hmm. you're like man i've been gone for 12 years like that's so crazy that you just pick yeah. back up right where you left yeah. off it's like life yes. happens. Like we were both yeah. in it for a while, and you know, life just kind of happens, steer you away from it for a little bit, and then, you know, this kind of was our calling card back to it, you know. And I mean, to be able to come up here and see how close knit y'all are, before haunted havoc, we prayed, all held hands. You guys said, "Hey, if you haven't shaken hands with somebody, you need to shake their hands right exactly. now." Definitely, right? yeah. It's it's about respect, and you know, you know, gratitude. You yeah. know, just being hospitable. You know, welcoming everyone. You don't, you don't find that a lot. No. This is a real egotistic business. It can be. I've, I've seen the dark side to it. Yeah. And it's, I, I'm not going to lie there. It, it can be discouraging um, because you travel to some places and um, I, you're just blown away by some of the things that you see or read or encounter. And, yeah. Um, you just that's that. It's even more reason for me to stay humble. And, and again, it's the golden rule. You know. And our, our buddy Gavin dixon down there in tulsa he uh, messaged me and he's like here's the deal like he got us a whole bunch of followers for our facebook page mm-hmm. like he pushed the crap out of us mm-hmm. and he's like here's the deal man if everybody works together everybody's name gets out there yeah, you know? yeah. and maybe one of us makes it big well yeah. and see and that's, that's the whole goal that's right. a you know funny story about how we started is we started as a WWE podcast yeah We'd meet up at my house Mondays and Tuesdays. After that, we'd podcast. We're like, well, this is fucking boring. We don't want to do this. Yeah. Everybody does it. So we regrouped, and we started out at the local scene. You know, we, you know, we've moved up then. And here's the thing. Is many people come up, to, come up to us, and they're like, well, why do you guys do this? Do you do it for yourselves? No, no, because if you can help one promotion get their name out there, or one guy that's just started in the business – do an interview with him or push him like we have a Mafia Monday yeah. section. That's what it's all about. We don't do it for ourselves. We do it because yeah. we want to push the hell out of the, the great people we meet and, and, and to make it big, you know? You know, the byproduct of that is people do know who we are. Uh, I was leaving the, uh, the mall the other day, and people were like, Frankie V. Ah. Don't you feel even, like a little local celebrity at yeah, that point? I didn't even turn around and look at him. I just threw the peace sign up and kept and it, walking. And it was the cops. And they <laughs> were like, stop <laughs> where you are, sir. <laughs> Put your hands you up, guys, Frankie. Have you guys been recognized up here since that last show? Like People uh, are like, why? This guy yeah, gets yeah, recognized yeah. everywhere. I, I can't, you know, my my girlfriend gets so annoyed. We'll, we'll run to, like, the grocery <laughs> store and I get people stopped. And, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she'll be like i want this to be in and out you know and yeah. uh, i'll get to talking with somebody um i was in a taco john's drive through the other day <laughs> and somebody was like you're the natester and i was like i am 
and he upsizes my drink and gives me <laughs> like and I was like, Thank you, you don't have to do that, but I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean I had it happen once at Brahms while I was checking out. They were like, Hey, like aren't you aren't you with XW wrestling? You do the announcing in the ring and I was like, Yeah, and they're like, Well, we really liked your show and I was like, Well, thank you. I actually had that happen to me in an Uber last week. Yes, I it's was so crazy. I was dude. to go and hang out with some buddies at a bar, and I get in, and this guy's like looking at me, just staring at me. And I'm like, either wants How to. How do like, I know you? Yeah, he's like, I'm like, this either this dude either wants to have sex with me, <laughs> or he's like, I don't know. He's like, well, if you like it, you look like one of the. Have you ever heard of the Bum Monkey Mafia? Which I kind of recognize the guy from a couple of shows we've done at Mid South, and I'm like, looking at him, he's like. You look like that Sea Ride guy from the Bump Monkey Mafia. I was like, nope, never heard of him. Been talking <laughs> about oh man, you, you should have been like, that's me. Yeah. So I work for a doctor, an orthopedic doctor. Uh huh. And this guy comes in and uh, I room him. Don't think nothing about it. Sir. Well, I go in the room with the doctor, so I got to write everything down. And uh, this dude's like, Doc. The doctor's like, what? He's like, do you know who that dude is? And he's like, <laughs> Frank? <laughs> He's like, that's Frankie B. <laughs> my doctor's like, what in the world are you talking about? And he's Isn't like, that's such a good this feeling. This dude, man. And we come out of the room and Doc's like, what in the world, man? <laughs> <laughs> the, the coolest guy I ever met, um, I don't remember what age I was, but I went to a SmackDown Live in Wichita. And, you know, some of the bigger names that had been in the business forever, um, they just got in their cars and left. Yeah. Um, Ray Mysterio Jr. stood by the gate and signed every single autograph. I mean, there was not a kid that didn't leave asking for an autograph that didn't get one. I mean, it was so humbling to watch. And and I always told myself, if I I ever make it to that level, I'm going to do it just like that because that's what it's about. Yeah, that's what I mean. When you're not too big for the business. Right. Um, yeah, go ahead. That celebrity, that comes with being well-known. I went to a, do you read Toby Keith's? Uh, no, Brick I Town. don't like Toby Keith. He sucks. Went over there, and uh, it just so happens WWE was in town. Big show comes to eat. People are going up, hey, man, can I have an autograph? Can I have an autograph? And he was signing autographs, all cool. His dinner's getting cold, but it doesn't uh, matter. Dinner hadn't arrived oh, yet. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. So me and my buddy are like, dude, should we go over there? Let's go get an autograph. And then, sure enough, man, uh, you just hear, and you hear banging. He's like, I'm trying to fucking eat. <laughs> and uh, they actually moved him upstairs to, like, a VIP area. Uh-huh. And I'm like, at some point, you got to realize, like, right. let the dude eat. Well, listen, yeah. when, you, you, when you go downtown half a mile away from the arena, you're probably going to get recognized. That's true. So I want to touch on a relationship you guys have built with IWR. Yes. We're Oklahoma boys, so we can appreciate what Jerry Bossick's done. We had him in your very venue last month for yeah. a, an interview. Um, it was fate. It was fate. That relationship seems like it's blooming. They, they've, you've had them, and they're always good to work with. Very much so. Oh, yeah, we love Jerry. Not just Jerry, but, you know, yeah. um, Chris and and. You know, the boys that, that yeah. have come up, I mean, they're all good workers, all good people. Um, I, I don't have anything negative to say about any of the four guys that nope. I've encountered from that organization at all. I mean, they've just, they're class act, they, yep. they, they're they um, true professionals, and they have helped guide us, mentor us. I mean, they've, and just doing that Oklahoma show, that Oklahomania, yeah. um, I think Jerry learned a lot from mentors like Jim Ross yeah. and, and people he brought in that he is now passed down to us. Yeah. Um, you know, from the smallest thing, you know, he told me, you know, from the very get go, from the first show he worked for us, he said, Hey man, any uh, worker that comes through that door, you should have a script ready for them so they can look it over and, and they know what yeah. they're doing. Um, you know, to li- just little things that you wouldn't, think about that make your show that much better and um that to me again that just speaks volumes to his character and how much he's helped us and guided us along the way yeah he's he's he's, he's really been you know kind of a nice uh, neutral voice and kind of yeah he likes this he likes that we could work on this we could work on that and it's it's been very appreciative and we really like his insight and 
I mean, he's been around. He knows a lot of big yep. players. So oh, it's, oh, it's pretty cool to have somebody it's, like that in your corner that says you have a great product and keep doing what you're doing. It's funny. We had a guy. I can't remember who it was. Because, you know, when we first got to XWB last month, we didn't really know a lot of people. I want to say, I don't remember who it was that walked up to me and said, that's the guy you want to interview. Those guys are legend in Oklahoma. I'm like, I fucking know. I live in Oklahoma. <laughs> I can't remember who it was, though, but we, I mean, a chance to get to sit down with him is always awesome. Well, you know, it's, it's true. Like, when we came down last time, and I felt like we were part of a, like, WWE event. Mm-hmm. Like, you go in, yep. everything's professional. Yep. You got the thing right there on the wall. You know what's going on. Shit ton of buffalo all the way. Catering. Like, Thank you, Keith. Yeah. Yeah. Proud sponsor. Thanks, wow. Keith. <laughs> Sorry for the cuss word, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just felt like we, like, we've never been a part of something like that. And to be a part of something, we thank you all for letting us. Yeah, we work out of a mall. Do the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hey. shutdown mall. <laughs> and, I, and I know I challenged you guys um, that yeah. day. Uh, you know, that was your, your first show, and you, you walked up. And I don't think you, you asked me the question, hey, is there anything we can do more to help? We, you know, where do you want us tonight? And uh, <laughs> without hesitation, I think I said, yeah, you guys are going to do commentary tonight. And your eyes got really wide, yeah. and you're like, Okay, yes, sir. And then I walked away, and I think that I, I would have loved to have heard the discussion after that because I'm it sure was you guys basically it was like, fuck. Like, <laughs> it was like, what did he just? Well, because we're like we're, we're crowd supplementation. Is yeah, what, what like, we do. Yeah. Which you know, commentary for us, we love it. We're excited to do it tomorrow night. It was it's enjoyable. You know, I've I've been a kid. I've been a kid. I was a kid a long time ago. I'm man. man Let's be honest. We're all big kids. We're all big kids. Yeah. I used to be when I was ten years old. Up to the time I was probably like yesterday, I would sit at home and call Monday Night Raws in my living room, just being bored. And to be able to do it for XWE, I mean, there's one thing doing it for. Let's be honest, here, a local shitty promotion. But when you have the production that XWE has. You're able to be a better person and a better announcer, you know? Yeah. It brings out the emotion in you. You're thinking, don't mess this up. Don't mess yeah. this up. Don't because, I mean, honestly, there's, there's some things that I could call for some promotions, you know. I mean, with, with Mid-South, we have a great working relationship with them. We've done yep. a lot of stuff for them. They're awesome. Love com- commentary for them with y'all. Awesome. But you go to some things in Oklahoma and say no names, whatever not, and you're just like, this is fucking boring. Like, I don't want to be here. I'd rather go watch grass grow. I watched him <laughs> sit in the hospital bed. <laughs> we did that last time. But I mean, y'all provide that entertainment because you don't know what's going to happen. I it's think like, if you go back and listen to that commentary at the very end, mm-hmm. like, we didn't know who anybody yeah. was. And we're like, Derek McMichaels, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Derek McMichaels. <laughs> He's here. And then we got home, we're like, fuck, it's Merrick. <laughs> yeah. But you were so caught up in the moment. And oh, you know yeah, what? If I did, if I was, if I didn't know what was going on, I probably sitting in your seat would have done the same thing. I, you know, you're blown away yeah. by what's going on. Yeah. Um, we, we love, and that's again, we love creating those moments, and, oh, and just like it keeps a, it fun and entertaining, not you, just for the fans, but even for the guys yeah, backstage. The guys in the back are like, "What the hell are they doing here?" <laughs> you know, it's funny because after that show, I went home. And I'd seen uh, Michael's Facebook page where, like, they had bought a ticket. Mm-hmm. And there were the, them in the back, and then you took the picture with them. And I right. was like, them fucking traitors. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to look back now, I should have seen this coming. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've gotten this guy sitting next to me. And he was like, for once, I'm going to be in the know. Yeah. We're, I'm going to punk these other guys because yeah. I've been punked three or four times. And it's not going down like that tonight. Um, you did, you all do such a good job of, of invoking that emotion because just like if you go back and listen when Bubba won, yeah, like we were full in the mode like yeah. Bubba son, oh my god, like it just drew that. We out like to let us. our inner Jr. come out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it's my like, god, it's like I said earlier. Like I th- I think about these things because it's not because what I want to happen. It's will the fans sitting there you know enjoy it or get a big reaction out of it like what's going to get the biggest like fan response or get the most you know out of the fans dollar you know that's that's kind of where i come from when when we have any sort of ideas that we want to try you know it's a great alternative too like you can take the whole family out have a good time oh yeah definitely. Like i got three kids like we go to the movies it's like 60 bucks and i'm like yeah you wouldn't believe now 
how many people come to our events and say, I wasn't even a wrestling fan, but there's something in your product that you put out yeah. that keeps me coming back over and over again. And I always say, you don't have to be a wrestling fan to come to our shows. Yeah. Nope, no, there no. is something. There's a little something for everybody. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be entertained. And I mean, that's what y'all do. Yeah. yeah. And then that's, and that's in we're XW entertainment. So. Number one, that's what we're going to try and do yeah. is entertain people. Each Good old wrestling show. entertainment. You can't beat it. You can't beat none of it, man. So, like, what was the uh, first moment where you felt that rush? Like, you know, that crowd. And you're like, yeah, that adrenaline feeling. Like, you're like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my oh, life. Man, I I mean, it, it, it stemmed from the backyard. I'm not going to lie. Okay. But um, when we moved into the Bicentennial Center, that, that very first show we put on, uh, God, I, I don't... Awakening. Yeah, it was yeah. Awakening. Um, it was such an adrenaline rush, man, uh, busting through that curtain. And it's like you were, you were, there were... There were people that followed us from the backyard to there, but there were a yeah. lot of new um, fans, too. And, and so you're like... You're reestablishing your brand. You're recreating yourself all over again, and um, it, it was just—it was quite a night. I mean, to get that first one under your belt, um, and then to go on to the next one and the next one, and every I can—if we talk about—if we sit here and, and you bring up past events, I can tell you. I mean, I can tell stories and go on and on all night long about each event and. The person I faced and, and, you know, I could tell you funny stories. I could tell you the psychology that went into it. I mean, they, it goes on and on. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just been – I, I want to write a book when this is all said. Yeah, autobiography. Um, hopefully it will be a New York Times bestseller. But <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so I'll tell you, you know, ever since I was little, man, I watched wrestling with my grandpa. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting there like five years old be like, that's what I want to do, man. I want to be – a real life superhero. Yeah. And funny thing in high school, like everybody made fun of me because I watched wrestling. I'm like, screw all y'all. I was this, a late bloomer. This shit is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we did a one act play where we actually did wrestling at the end of it. So it was like an like two angels. I was an angel and the dude playing Lucifer. And, like we were fighting over this kid's soul. And I was in the sound booth because I ran production. I thought it would be cool. I'd be like, all right, I'm tired of this crap. Like I'm coming out of the booth. To uh-huh. save you. And uh, the whole auditorium stood up. And they're like, Rocky, Rocky. Because that's the name of the character I played. And I like paused for a second. And you're like, holy cow. Like it just it's the best. gives you this energy. Like, yeah. yeah, there's it's nothing. Awesome. El- until you experience it, you can't put it into words. There's nothing else like it. Um, you know, at Haunted Havoc, when you have 500 people chanting Nate, stir, Nate, stir. I mean... Now I know why they said Hogan was hulking up because you do. You just go. It's like an out-of-body experience. I mean, yes. you just start pumping up, and you can't yeah. help but react to react back to the fans. And, oh, and yeah. yeah. You become their superhero. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whether you're, let's be honest, whether you're villain or face or heel face, um, you're playing that character. And to tap into that emotion to bring that out into somebody, it, it, it's a special work. Um, it's so crazy. We signed some autographs at that uh, we did a show, show in Guthrie. Guthrie, and I was like, dude, we didn't even do anything. Yeah. We were ring announcing. And some kids kid were like, walked up to me and was like, can I get your autograph? I'm like, I'm a fat piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's obviously the product for y'all is amazing. People get excited for it. I mean, that's that's that should be how wrestling should feel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get excited, you wait a month, and you get excited, and you come back, and you see the same good show. Then you wait a month. Well, that's the idea is to just, you know, send them home happy and get them talking about it so we yep. can build hype for the next show. Well, people are definitely talking about you. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's for damn Seasons sure. Season's beatings, December 4th, by Salina Bicentennial Center. Tickets are on sale. Yep. <laughs> Seven bucks. So I mean, seven bucks. Oh, yeah. 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 Ringside Generally. are sold out, so. Yeah, Ringside is sold out. They might be on StubHub. Yeah, six hundred dollars. Yeah, it, that ticket's more in demand than a Cubs Game Seven World Series. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, guys, we appreciate having you on. Hey, thank you guys. 
this means a lot that you're here and um means again, a lot that you guys have us oh, so. yeah. um, just everything you do for wrestling we we appreciate it um We'll, we'll have you back anytime. I mean, you've got an open invite. You're you're awesome. part of the family, so definitely, yeah. We appreciate everything you do, and we hope you guys have fun at the show tomorrow as well. Oh, I know we will because it's yeah. gonna be uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a memorable one. Yes, we, we yes. can't wait. So yeah. All right, we heard it here first tomorrow night. Season's beating Salina, Kansas. Be there.